Anybody in here have people you, you love in your life? And sometimes they can be doing a million right things and you seem to always get focused on the one wrong thing. I know nobody in here ever has that problem. I can see nobody has it. It's okay. I'll just talk about me for tomorrow. Y'all ready? Yes. How many like the peace of God? Amen. I mean, we, we come in here together, you know, hopefully you if you felt it, you've experienced it. You know, it's not, I'm so thankful the peace of God's not one of those things I gotta have a theology degree to figure out if I had it or not. <laughs> you know, nobody once you've really tasted it, you've been in some of these spirit-filled full gospel services. No one can talk you out of your experience. Only the enemy can try to deceive you out. Right? Well, don't let him. Going to our, we're going to talk about, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? The Bible says, take every thought captive that exalts itself above the mind of Christ. Now the Bible says that he's given that we have the mind of Christ. Alright? So that means I should be able to think the way Jesus thinks. But that means I have that the enemy's going to be firing all kinds of fiery darts at me, and I have to take those thoughts captive. How through faith. Right? Yes. So what I want as the Lord was speaking to me this week, uh too late, honey. I didn't know you were going to be here. <laughs> oh, gosh, she says. Oh, My wife, especially since all the challenges I've had the last few years, has to do more for me than any woman should possibly ever have to do. And she does it with a fantastic heart that helps me through things that most women would have left me a long time ago. And do you know that I still find things to be frustrated with her over? Come on, I'm just being honest with you. She can do five million things right, and if I let the enemy, he'll have me focus on the one thing that she's doing wrong. And then I'll get super frustrated over if I let myself. Now what was that? That was a thought that was from the pits of hell. It was something that exalted itself, the mind of Christ, because the Bible tells me to love her even as Christ loved the church. That means that no matter what she does, I'm to exalt her and love her, right? right. So now it just shot itself above the mind of Christ. And I then have a decision, and, one, one, and sometimes it may manifest a little bit, then once I've caught it, I have a decision what I do with that thing. The smart one is to repent to my beautiful bride, say I'm sorry, which sometimes, you know, uh, I, I may have said a dumb thing or two before I catch myself, and I know none of you have ever been there. <laughs> I'm not talking about being in sin. I'm just talking about being frustrated. Come on, we're talking about real things this morning. Yeah. Whatever it is, I don't got a wife. Well, you've got somebody in your life. I promise you that this is going on with. I know it by the Spirit of God. All right? No matter who it is, you have somebody. And so, but then what do I have to do? I have to repent to my wife, right? Well, I've been in ministry 25 years. I have dealt with all kinds of individuals. I am fast to get right because I like my peace. But I don't even give my poor bride time to process what just happened. It's like a ricochet effect. Ping, 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 and I'm done. I'm covered by the blood and I'm moving on. She's still processing that I was upset for 10 seconds. <laughs> And I'm expecting her to get washed in the blood and get right and move on with me. What do you mean you're still upset with me? <laughs> Big smile. <laughs> but the word has a lot to say about this, honey, because here's the thing. There is no value that can be placed upon my peace. There's no value that can be placed on your peace. And what the enemy is ultimately after is your peace. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of things I've had to do to get to this point. For one, I've, learned how to, I've had to learn to keep my heart right. What did I do to that? I keep putting the Word of God in it daily. So it holds me accountable. And it helps me, gives me scriptures to help me overcome things. 
like the soft answer turneth away wrath. Don't you say something stupid. <laughs> you want to know, Pastor Billy, he, he, he still laughs this day. You want to know one of the first verses I memorized? It was the second one, actually. And he said, he just laughed. He said, that's fitting that you would memorize that verse out of all of them and the whole Bible. And the Bible says, well, the first one I memorized is even a fool looks smart and keeps his mouth shut. <laughs> Everybody thought I was so smart. No, I just like to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and the other one, it's better to live on the corner of a roof. Being alone in the desert, there's two of them, or on the corner of a rooftop than to be with a contentious <laughs> nagging one. <laughs> <laughs> and oh my, she said. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I seen something the other day that said uh, along that same line, the woman says, yes, sir. I see that in the scripture, Lord, which the other do I send him to? <laughs> Instead of her wanting to change her contentious and nagging, she was going to send him to the desert. You say, what is this all talking about? Come on, we're just having a talk this morning. Because how many know if God be for you, who can be against you, right? So there is no value on your peace. But here's the thing. Every week, every day, the enemy uses these same tactics yes. from one extreme to the other. Now, maybe not the same individuals on every person in this room because he comes after your peace. Yes. You come here, you get filled up. We've been having anointed moves of God and then maybe you make it through the whole night. Maybe you don't, you know. <laughs> Monday morning arises and, and maybe you put your word in and you have a good day, you know, but then again, they did the toothpaste wrong when you got up, and then something else was wrong, or I don't know what it was. Praise God, I have moved past the toothpaste most of the days. <laughs> I would have been in so much trouble. Give him praise, Pastor. But. You're never going to stop the enemy completely from sending things that frustrate you. But I'm going to give you some tools to help deal with them. Some of you are going to say, well, I've heard those tools before. Well, great. Start using them some more again. Because your peace has been, has been sliding. Y'all still with me? Yes. All right. So let me go to famous verse for me. If you haven't been here very long, you should know this one by heart. Philippians 4, 8. I'm going to read you a couple <laughs> verses and then I'm going to preach. All right, y'all ready? Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. How do you know if something's true, by the way? If it lines up with the Word of God. If it don't line up with the Word of God, it ain't true. I don't care whose opinion it is. I don't care how many PhDs they have. Yes. I don't care how long they talked about it from the pulpit. If it ain't lined up with the word of God, it ain't true. Right. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever things are honest. We live in a world that, any, that honesty doesn't go, but if it ain't honest, you don't need to be thinking on it. Right. Okay. Well, somebody brought me so-and-so, and somebody said so-and-such. I got to try to figure out what's true. No, was it honest? I don't know. Well, there you go. There you go. Don't think on it. Well, that just solved a whole bunch of problems, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> true and honest right there. We just knocked out 90% of the yeah. stuff coming at us. Y'all yeah. yes. still there? Yes. Whatsoever things are just. Now, do you know the truth? Do you know both sides? Do you know if this is the in-depth thing of everything that's going on? Could, could you make a judicial decision that this is just and fair for everybody involved? No, I cannot. Well, then you should not be thinking on it. Well, I've got to decide whose side I'm on. Well, is it just? Come on. You want your peace? You want to keep that up? These are the things you have to guard against. These are the things that lift themselves above the mind of Christ. Whatsoever things are pure. Those things that line up with the word of God. And that pure means uh, innocent, modest, and perfect, chaste, clean, or pure. So, whatsoever
both several things are lovely. Lovely there is friendly, acceptable, those things that, you know, how many like friendly people, friendly things? What sort of things are of a good report? Reputable. Did you get it from, a, was it established in the mouth of two or three witnesses? Did you hear both sides of the story? Or did you just get a Facebook blast? Or did you get it from the old telephone line or the messenger or the textbook? Is it reputable? Is it a good report? No. Then don't think on it. Don't let the arrow in your head. It's going to take your peace. Some of you are like, I can't figure out where the doorway's at where I keep losing my peace. I hope you're starting to get a revelation this morning. Someone say, why don't I, I you know, for me, I, I don't do none of that. Why? Because uh, for one, I, and say, well, it was established with so and so. Well, that's great. I don't know so and so. And the Bible says, know those that labor among you. So I can't tell if he's a, if he's a just person or not. Or so I can't just if his report is true. Well, I had two or three witnesses. Well, I don't know the two or three witnesses. So I, for I am not involved. You see how that goes. I'm not talking about sticking your head in the sand. Just hold on. <laughs> if there be any virtue, that's excellence. Well, I love the, I love this next part because I've I got a, I got a sermon series brewing. If there be any manliness, <laughs> I may mean, know oh, that the world is in need of some Christian manliness. And that can go on both things, but excellence, praise, virtue, and manliness. So, you know, is this thing exalting the Lord? Is it bringing praise to him? Or, you know, is this someone that's being manliness for the Lord? Uh, you know, therefore standing up for things thereafter. Be any praise, think on these things. There you go. When I was a young believer, he gave me this verse, and I was like, As well, what do I think on? He said, I'll just give you a list. How's that? Mm -hmm. If it don't fit on the list, don't think on it. Mm -hmm. Do you know I started doing that and my life changed? Mm -hmm. Was it easy? No. And But you know what? I started catching it. I was letting off. I didn't even have a net up to fine tune. I just let whatever was come in. Whatever came at me that day, whatever was spewing out of someone's mouth, what was on the TV, what was on the radio, it was just an open source going, Psh! And I was wondering why I didn't have any peace. <laughs> and I started learning to fine tune. And then after I got my net up, I, blur, I figured out I had holes in my net. There was things that would broadside me. There was things that I'd been taught from a young age that this is how you feel strongly on. And the Lord said, did I tell you to think on that? No. But it's wrong. Did I tell you to think on that? No, sir. Yeah, listen, and there's times that God does tell you that he says that our weapons are not carnal but mighty to pull them down strongholds. There's times we pray and we shake heaven and we rip down strongholds. But I'm not going to sit there and meditate on the problem. I'm going to meditate on the solution. Amen. I'm going to find the scripture that deals with the problem by his stripes I was healed. Amen. Not that doctor's report was bad. That doctor's report is not edifying. It's not good. It doesn't. I paid them for that. But it's not going to, if I meditate on just that report, is it going to just think on it? Is any good going to come from that? No. But if I go find the word of God that says, by, that deals with that exact thing, and I choose to meditate upon that, now I'm thinking on the good things and now I am overcoming by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Come on. Listen, it may be a simple message this morning, but it'll be life-changing again to you if you'll put it into practice. So, think on these things. So that's Philippians 4, 8. That ought to be a life emergency verse for you. And you ought to be kind of running that through your spirit until it becomes part of who you are. If 
you're having a rough day, pull up Philippians 4, 8, and read it and go, am I lining up with this? Listen, me and my wife, our job is to be so filled up that we can come pour out and minister to you all. The Bible says that if we're out with each other, he can't even hear our prayers. If you don't think he don't try to get pastors to, to be an ought with one another so that he could get to all of you, you'd be crazy. But we've learned to be quick to repent, quick to love, and to buy these things. And that's how she's put up with me all these years. <laughs> Isaiah 26, verse 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. This is going to be one of your key verses. For the, I still got plenty of time. Look at, I'm sitting down. I'm not being crazy. Isaiah, but I will be soon. In Jesus name. <laughs> Isaiah 26, 3. Thou wilt keep him. That means thou, thou will. For those that are not familiar with King James. Does it say it might? Does it say it could? No. Does it say it should? Yes. It will. It will keep him in perfect peace. Does it say a little bit of peace? Yes. Does it say just, you know, that kind that only get at church? No. The kind that only happens when Pastor <laughs> prays for him. So he'll keep him in perfect peace. That peace that passes all understanding. That peace that you shouldn't, that you can't have any other place but through God. That peace that you you really, you know that you shouldn't be in turmoil on the inside, but he's got you as calm as a cucumber mm -hmm. on the inside. He will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. So what are you going to have to do? You have you to. Keep your mind on it. How do you do that? Well, Philippians 4, 8. You think on these things. And you think about Jesus. The Bible says, lift up your head up to the hills. Lift your eyes to the hills where comes your help. Your help comes from Jesus. When you keep, the Bible says, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, pressing on towards the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. You have to look up and keep your eyes on him. We live in a world where you are inundated with, uh, from your phone to your TV. I mean, they got billboards that change every three seconds now. The amount of level of, of stuff that's trying to, uh, that's competing for space in your mind is mind blowing. And he doesn't even care if he keeps it full of senseless stuff, you know. I don't understand the whole, uh, you know, thing where people are addicted to the crazy cat minds. But, you know, some people can scroll all day and look at that stuff. And it may make them laugh for a few seconds, but it does not sustain them. I know I'm being silly. Just bear with me. Unless you're one of those cat mind people and you got a little bit of that. But... You've got to keep your mind on the Lord. How do you do that? Well, one, you need to be in the Word every day. You need to have, you know, it's healthy to take what I call praise breaks. Where you read your Bible, you get some worship music out, and you just start worshiping the Lord, and you start purposely thinking on Him. It'll change your atmosphere. Years ago, when I was overcoming, I, 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 I the Lord's taken it from me now, but man, I used to be obsessive. I used to, I, I could analyze anything into the ground. I, mean, I was an overthinker, didn't even categorize me. I would drive people nuts. You know, finally, Pastor Billy just told me one day, You're just going to have to go lock yourself up to the Lord and work this out. I wouldn't, and I wasn't even a minister then, but, you, and, and, but then he told me something that changed me in my life, and he didn't have to. He said, Brian, I used to be just like you. I thought, you? You're the coolest cucumber I know, man. You just pop the word off. He said, I started flying the word to every situation I had. I'd go find what the word had to say yes. and see the word overcome every one of those intrusive thoughts. Mm. Well, guess what? I thought, that sounds pretty smart. Guess what I did? I went and did that, and before long, Hopefully you can't see that guy in me anymore. 
Because he's been dead a long time. But whose mind has stayed on thee because he trusteth in me. And there's the other key. You need to believe that the word of God is true. That Jesus is who yes. he said he is. And he can do what he said he could do. Yes. And when you do that, okay, one more verse. I'm going, look, I'm going so fast. I'm going to read a different translation and then I'll read the King James. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Well, I'm going to start in verse 1. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3. If then you have a new life with Christ, give your attention to the things of heaven. Now, how many in here do you have stuff fighting for your attention every moment? I'm going to tell you something. We talk about tithes and offerings, and we do that so that you guys will be blessed and grow in it, not to get your money. But you know what? There's more than money to tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. right. And one of the greatest things is that uh, the enemy wants you to tip God with your time. And if he's your Lord, how many you know he owns you? Now, most people in America resent that statement. They don't like the thought of someone owning them. But he owns you, and he says, set your attention on the things of heaven. So if it's all the Lord's, and and you're so the enemy sometimes he doesn't even care if you come to church as long as he owns you the other 98% of the time. Well, come on, I'm preaching this morning. Now, some people would say, you know, they used to call some of us that sold out 100%. They had names for it when I was a young minister. They loved to call me what they thought was an insult that I started wearing as a badge of honor. They'd call me a Jesus freak. He's one of them Jesus freaks. That's all he talks about and all he thinks about. And then I had some people that were supposedly in ministry, but they never went nowhere and Later on, I realized why well, they'd say, oh, he's so heavenly minded. He's no earthly good. Yeah. You know, I'm like, well, praise God. <laughs> yeah. And it says here to give all my attention to heaven. <laughs> Brandon, you know, do we have to take care of our families? Yes, the Bible's full of talking about those things. Don't wisdom and faith go hand in hand. But the great news, he said, when you, the, the part is what I started to get to is you can't outgive God. Amen. When you put your attention to heaven, that he takes care of all those things concerning yes. you. And you can ask some of the leaders here, and every person that's ever surrendered themselves to any kind of ministry, I teach this in our Bible class. Because the enemy will tell you, well, if I start doing all the stuff that they're doing, I'm never going to have no time for myself, and I have no time for myself now, and I'm barely getting by to get anything done. I know, you don't have to tell me that's what it sounds like to you too. <laughs> I can promise you, and you can ask each one of them, don't take my word for it, find them alone somewhere. Ask him. You can't outgive God. The more you give of God, you'll be amazed at how he, he can make a, a he, he makes special days and the memories you make and the things that you get to do are mind blowing. But if the enemy can keep you focused on everything else, not only does he keep you from a, a, a accomplishing the, the calling that God has on your life, he also messes with your peace. Come on. I'm preaching this morning. Amen. Listen, and for the record, I'm not, I don't even know when I'm going to have the next Bible school, so I'm not petitioning for none of that. I'm just telling you there's lots of good information to help you overcome. And the one that probably needs it the most is the one that says I've already had it. Big smile. Where Christ is seen the right hand of God, keep your mind on the higher things. How many, listen, if you can't find the word at least three times, it doesn't need to be doctrine. This is just a quick three. Are we saying this is an established thing? Keep your mind on higher things, not on the things of the earth. Did I say you couldn't like football? I did not. I didn't say you couldn't like basketball. I didn't say you couldn't like racing. I will tell you, I'm probably not the guy to talk to him about because, man, I, I'm telling you, all I want to talk about is Jesus. He's been so good to me. The things I've experienced, I've not found anything in this world that can compare it to him. But I still have days that Pastor Tammy drives me crazy. <laughs> if 
vice versa, huh, honey? Yes. I'm sorry. I, I was trying to be funny. I didn't know. Anyhow, moving on. But, you know, I have to choose what I think on. And God has been dealing with me personally here lately about learning to deal with them quicker. I'll start realizing I'm getting frustrated. And I go, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. And you know, the other day, I, I think I shocked her. We were, I was getting gas on the Harley. We had the spare house dinner, I guess, today. And once again, me and Pastor Tammy, she got out of the car to come help me bump gas. Uh, and she was standing there. And, and I just looked at it. And, you know, usually I'm all business kind of guy who's dealing with all kinds of things. And I just looked at her. And I'm not telling this Adam, I'm very uncomfortable sharing these kind of things. But I just thanked her for all that she does for me because. You know, I, sometimes, you know, you forget and you, you get so wrapped up in doing the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. You know, and the, I have a few sayings. One of the PBisms is that you can't be hateful when you're grateful. You can't be hateful when you're thankful. You know, and you, how do you stay not being hateful or grateful? You start choosing what you think on. You start choosing what is ruling in your mind. I promise you there will be stuff that's going to bug you this week. Mm -hmm. You may be something bugging you right now. I wish he was yeah. running around. I, you wish I would preach different. Well, pray for me. Praise God. Maybe we can get there. Mm -hmm. But God sent you here. So you might as well start looking for the good stuff here. Amen. And seeing how you can make it better. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yes. Now, tomorrow when you wake up, what are you going to think on? Good, good things, pure things. You know, if nothing else, I promise you, if you'll start thinking about how much Jesus did for you, just thinking about, well, he washed you white as snow. Mm -hmm. That just makes you happy, don't it? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the peace of God starts coming all over you, and you're like, whoo! That swing out over hell with a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eyes. <laughs> Only us hillbillies do that. You gotta come to Illinois to get the corn. <laughs> but you know, where is your mind at? And if you've been finding yourself always on the negative side, I want to encourage you to start flushing that and changing what you're thinking of. But I'm not here to beat on you. I just told you I deal with it. You deal with it. It's part of our human nature. That's why he told us what to think on. That's why he did it. That's why he kept telling us, listen, put your mind here. Put your mind here. Fill your mind full of this. Because he knew that the enemy, enemy's an idiot. He has no new tactics. And I've known this for 20 some years. And I still have to go back and shore up my walls from time to time. And, okay, what are you thinking of? <laughs> but I have noticed, I want to give you a tidbit. If you start finding yourself really frustrated with somebody, something, if you go down through this process, I promise you, you'll be better when you get to the end. 